And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. Yeah. If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys, Toys on Tap, Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's <laughs> and also <laughs> and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't Bootleg. understand, there were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I, I didn't realize it was just pretend voice. Oh. I'm so stoked to have you, Brian oh, man. Tyler. I'm so thrilled. Yeah. So I I don't want to do any introductions because I'm excited for what you're about to talk about. Please introduce yourself. Please tell us what you do because there's a lot of titles there. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, Brian, uh, <laughs> and um, I yeah I do a lot. I uh, work at the Mego Museum, which is a website dedicated to Mego toys. You know, uh, stuff like this, the Spider-Man action figure, oh, quintessential Spider-Man action figure in the 70s. And from working at that, I, I learned how to, you know, work on HTML and, and all that stuff. And I, I thought, I'm going to create a website that is everything that isn't Mego, and it's all my obsessions, you know. <laughs> Department store catalogs, uh, crummy, to <laughs> crummy toys. Uh, the the times when people dressed as Spider Man came to your department store. You know, like it was like a repository for all my ADHD, and I called it Plaid Stallions because that made me laugh when I was in high school. And from that, um, and I think this is the reason I'm here, is somewhere down the line, like Plaid Stallions became very popular, and. I found a lot of like-minded people and I got finally, you know, I'd always wanted to publish a book and I finally realized, okay, this is my niche, uh, which is uh, rack toys. The, um, the stuff you find as Peter Griffin called it, those terrible pharmacy toys, you know, <laughs> and um, I, I have a special interest in those because um my parents sold them when I was a kid. So I grew up in a warehouse full of rack toys. You lucky, lucky man. Yeah, yeah. Like I wouldn't trade it. I mean, I had to I had to work on Saturdays and stuff, but it was fun. And um so I published this book about 10 years ago. It sold out, and uh the the good people at Nacell wrote me about a year ago and said we'd like to republish it. And um you know, it took me a while because, you know, it's, it's uh, something very personal. And then I realized like, <laughs> how, how is this going to hurt you? You know? And um, so I'm very happy to be here and uh, very excited. And it, it's a very validating feeling to be perfectly honest with you. Thank you so yeah. much for that introduction. Yeah. Uh, what's cool mm -hmm. about Toys on Tap um, is that we get to know the artist. So before we even dive into why you're here for sure, I want to know about you as the bootleg artist because I got a little glimpse of that. Yeah. That, that fits um, in our world. Well, um, I love bootleg action figures. I collect uh, Mego knockoffs and I have for years. And um, in fact, um, I, my, my dad was a distributor of rack toys and he often picked up kind of like bootleg Mego action figures. So there's a whole subculture in Mego collectors to make uh, weird figures. And what I did for Plaid Stallions is we, we decided to make our own action figure actually through thousands yeah. of dollars to China. And we had a, a, a model uh, called Brick Mantooth which this guy just appeared in all these catalogs and then this mythology grew around him. And uh, somewhere around the, like, somewhere, I, I don't even know when this happened, but it's like a joke that just goes too far. Uh, <laughs> I, had a, I had a really good friend who's a Oscar winning 
special effects artist, sculpt a brick man tooth head. And then uh, Robin, who's the, co the creator of the Mego Museum, created another character called the Super Collector, which is like the Mego Museum's superhero. Yeah. And it's just brick with a mask on. <laughs> and, and we created this whole mythology of, you know, brick is the Super Collector. And we did this double sided box. And we made action figures in, Ch in China through uh, a guy by the name of Dr. Mego. And then I kind of like started this whole thing of doing limited edition runs of Brick as different uh, 70s toys, <laughs> but like they're kind of like sexualized, you know, because like <laughs> Brick was this sort of like pansexual character, like, yeah. um, you know, gay people loved him, straight people loved him. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's all, it's just like a 70s toy where they just give you G.I. Joe and you create the backstory, you know? Yeah. And so I, I would take like, um, you, you've heard it, have you heard of the 70s toy called Pulsar? I have not. Okay, Pulsar was this wonderful toy by Mattel where it's all a gimmick. It, it, it's basically, they, they, you know, they watched the sales of the $6 million man and they said, well, how do we emulate this? So when you ripped open Pulsar's chest, it's not robotics. It was like a pumping heart and lungs, like a, oh, through a clear weird. plastic. So, um, and, and if you just bear with me, I can go get my version. So what we did was we called him polyester <laughs> and instead of the ultimate man of adventure i called him the ultimate man of pleasure oh my and, gosh and you know i can show you now because he fell off the card but he's got um a fuzzy chest oh instead of um instead of <laughs> pumping heart and lungs because i i wouldn't know how to engineer that but i i did another version of him where he was a micronaut, but I called him Micronauti. Oh my gosh. And he had an eight, like he had a reel to reel player in his chest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. The, the one that I regret not doing because I couldn't figure it out now with 3D printing, I probably could. Are you familiar? There's a toy called the Knight of Darkness. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a knockoff of Darth Vader. Um, I, I had a Brickman too. I have the logo. I have the packaging art and everything. It was going to be called the Night of Thickness. Oh my gosh. But I, I never, I never got it off the ground. Like a seventies porn name. <laughs> yeah. It just, it was like, all right, I'm crossing a line and I don't know what I'm doing, but I also created a lot of bricks, uh, wingmen. And it actually corresponds with a podcast I do with my pal, Jason Lindsay called pod stallions. And, you know, I created like stretch, like, <clears throat> Uh, I have an art. I'm also a painter and I like to paint 70s monsters in polyester clothing. I call it like the polyester monster series. Yeah. So I created a couple of different characters. One is Rom Space Knight and, you know, a leisure suit. And I call it Ron Space Pimp. <laughs> and we did a figure called It's a Stretch Monster, but he's in a a, a variety of leisure suits and I call them satin monsters. So that was my oh, dalliance gosh. into bootleg figures, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I love bootleg figures. Like you just look at it and go like, Oh, this is such a, this is, this is art. This is a culture. And yeah. I, I want to be part of this culture. You know, my favorite is that you took, not only did you make that bootleg like figure, but it could have been its own toy line so easily, like so worth it too. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. And to be honest with you, um, it's so time consuming. I wish I had like, you know, you know, like there's just so many it's, it's opportunity costs. Yeah, there's just so many hours in the day. And probably when I was working on that, I was also I, at one time I was a, a freelance writer working for um, Village Voice and they were paying me, you know, <laughs> so it's just one of those things where it's yeah. like. Uh, I'll just take the money. But yeah, no, I, I, I love this sort of thing. It brings me a lot of joy. Yeah. And so I have, we're going to take a step way back. I want to know mm -hmm. how you got into art as a whole, because I hear like, there's almost a light that shines when you talk about the art that you paint or the art that you create. Yeah. And I've just always been uh, a drawer. Yeah. <laughs> as, as they say, um, it's always come out of me. Um, 
I, you know, my father is like one of those guys, like I found a notepad from my dad 40 years ago and it's literally 40 pages of doodles. Oh, I love it. You know, he was just uh, like constantly drawing on the phone mm. and my dad is a better draftsman, 10 times a better draftsman than me. Uh, but I know where I came, like it obviously came from that. And, you know, like a lot of kids, I grew up, <laughs> I grew up wanting to be Stan Lee, not yeah. realizing he probably couldn't draw like a stick man. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, or Jack Kirby or whatever. Uh, I never had the stick to to be a cartoonist or like I tried, um, yeah. you know, I, I went through phases like, um, Drew Friedman was a huge influence and uh, Peter Bagg, gigantic mm -hmm. influence. But, I, you know, I just, art was one of those things where uh, I think sometime in my life, I just realized like, well, I can't make a living doing this. And then you kind of push it down. And it was having kids and the idea of like, well, I could have like art days with the kids. I Heck yeah. Sit here and paint. And um, then I just became uh, a portrait artist uh, out of that. Yeah. And um, what, what's wonderful about it is both my kids have talent. My son is an amazing drafts, like he has real penmanship. And my daughter is, is 10 times better than me because she just has that stick to itiveness, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word. So art is... Um, Art is everything to me. Yeah, you know, um, toy packaging. Uh, you know, the the I grew like I, I'm I'm fifty. So um, when I was you know like five, I would walk into a wall of painted GI Joe boxes, and they were all beautiful. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I I love that art. Like anyone could love stuff in a museum it's so beautiful yeah and um that has an influence on you and it's it's you know sure it's pop culture and it, you know it's for kids but it's beautiful mm -hmm. you yeah. know i as i you look through your instagram and then your website it is dominated by the this like toy vibe of the 70s and 80s and it's just like I didn't grow up in that time but I remember being a kid in the 90s playing with those toys that my right. grandfather had had and just kept her um, and it just I rem and one of the ads that uh, it shocked me to the point where I had to text it to a friend of mine there's a an ad for um the eight people that's like a dollar 49 for each one it's one yeah. of the posts that you've done and it's like that is the craziest price for a doll or for an action figure yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah and um to be perfectly honest with you um like I, you know i was a teenager in the 80s yeah but i look at the boxes for masters of the universe and they're like frazetta paint yeah. You know, <clears throat> and you look at it and go like, how can you not like I, you know, I have no uh, dog in this race. I, you know, He-Man was kind of silly to me when I was 13, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it, it's a bit immature and, because I'm 13. Um, but those pack, those packaging, are, like the, the, that, you know, the Castle Grayskull box is like, that's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, how could that not? like overwhelm a kid when he's five, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, enrapture them into like, Oh yeah, I, this is my world. <laughs> yeah. I, what is so crazy is like I, in this bootleg scene to what you're describing, I mm. wish would carry on to um, other people that are entering the scene. The packaging is either half or more than half mm. of the whole entire piece of artwork. Absolutely. And that's uh, the number one reason I wrote Rack Toys is that there is this wonderful irony to everything. Yeah. You know, and it was never like it's discussed in books, but it's always themed like, you know, some Star Trek books will talk about Star Trek Rack Toys and blah, blah, blah. But I, like years and years ago, I uh, 
there was a wonderfully info like other than my my parents there was the second most influential thing was a store on queen street in toronto called funorama mm. and the guy who owned funorama it was a friend of mine and he just had this whole passion for generic toys and he's like he kept saying like no no this stuff is amazing <laughs> yeah and uh and he was a character he was a really funny character i could do hours of stories on that guy but uh you know, he was right. There was a beauty in things that aren't licensed, that are just kind of like for children of certain eras. And, you know, they have this wonderful artwork. But the thing I love about rack toys is they have two different modes. They have the the trying, um, which I had a P oh yeah, which this would be considered a, a, a trying or caring toy, which is okay. a Star Trek phaser. Okay, it's powder blue, yeah. but it looks like the Star Trek phaser. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know and then you have the um, the other side of it that is just trying to get rid of an existing mold or use an existing mold and tap it to another license. And that would be my favorite rack toy of all time, which is the uh, Planet of the Apes helicopter. Yeah, holy moly. Um, now, let's, if you look at this, that card art is gorgeous. You know, there's yeah. no style guide. You know, like, <laughs> there's no nothing. And this is a Batman helicopter. Yeah. You know, but they put a, a weird hieroglyphic there. They put a... Uh, very strange. You know, they put a soldier ape instead of Batman in there because yeah. that's going to make it all better. Uh, and there's... We interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Meanwhile, the galaxy of bootleg treasures. DOV2, we have a engine failure. We almost crash land on DKE Toy Planet. Oh my, we're doomed. Wait, salvation. Hooray. We'll save the DLP 2 Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE toys. Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures. DKE. There's an irony to that. There's a sense of humor to that. And there's also an art to that. Like that is like to me, that hits me in the face every morning when I get up, you know, like yeah. I walk in the office and I look at that beautiful orange card and I think like you couldn't uh, get away with that now. Yeah. You know, and um, I have friends in the toy industry. I, I've worked in licensing for, for years and it is the, like it is, they've just drained the joy it's such committee thinking yeah and um like i have i have a stack of toys behind me i, I don't want to show them but uh i just got in the door that like the toys are nice but the card art and i you know behind the scenes i worked on the card art and it was like oh god like they just it, it's 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 like out of a kid's show, you know, where there's oh, like bummer. no fun anymore. Like, yeah. let's get rid of anything fun. And it's it's sad. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they used to just let everyone do whatever they wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and we were better for it. Yeah. And um, that's the kind of stuff that I miss. And I think I think I'm not alone in that. Like even you growing up in the 90s you would remember a time when things were a little less regulated with yeah. toys and, and fun, you know? I think when, uh, in like reference to that Planet of the Apes um, helicopter, it's crazy to me because you look at that and that is, that's like the smartest business move on whatever company produced that. Like <laughs> they just are just using parts from all over. Oh yeah, yeah, it's label slapping. Yeah, and then you have companies today like uh, NECA mm -hmm. who are making these intrinsic, like, beautiful figures that that is only going to be used for that action figure because it's, like, right for that. And yeah. so there's it's missing the fun element of, hey, this looks like a Hulk arm, but it's also an abomination arm or it's also something else. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with it is, is like now we, it, it, the, the whole market has changed. Yeah. The whole market is actually, you know, as a friend of mine puts it, it's like nerd hummels. 
<laughs> it's it's not going to kids anymore. Yeah. It's going to cynical adults who will go, hey, you terrible NECA, you know, and they'll do like a 10 minute YouTube video. Yeah. About how that's a Hulk arm. And you're just like, we we're all grown people here, you know. Um, and and I see it a lot. And that's the negative side of adult collecting, I guess. Um I personally embrace that sort of thing. And I'm just going to point out one thing that I actually have right here. And I, I find this funny. Yeah. This is a Planet of the Apes Caesar Nego action figure. Love it. Just came out. I have always wanted a Caesar action figure since I was like seven. Yeah. The back of the box <laughs> has a picture of Cornelius. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, Roddy McDowell played Caesar and Cornelius. Yeah. Roddy McDowell played Caesar and Cornelius in the same outfit and same costume. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're familiar, like, Miko actually released a Caesar action figure, or a Cornelius action figure in the 1970s. And then they released a figure of Galen, which was Roddy McDowell's character from the TV series. Yeah. They're the exact same doll. <laughs> they just are in different cards that say Caesar and Galen or Cornelius and Galen. Yeah. So to me, this is like sarcasm. Okay. Like to me, this is like, yeah, the, okay. I get the joke. It's like, yeah. There are people like furious about this. Yeah. And it's just like, no, 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 no. First of all, it's just a toy. Relax. And second of all, that's funny. Yeah. Like, that's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is shelf worthy. Yeah, that that to me is like, yeah, no, 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 dude. That actually gets a gold star. For yeah. <laughs> That's ingenuity. So we, yeah. as you are uh, it, like in this art world and you start being enticed by these rack toys and your parents are have a warehouse of it, this- As a kid, yeah. Yeah, so as you like walk through this warehouse and see these rack toys, what is that like growing up with that type of experience? It's weird. Um, and, and one of the most interesting things about it for me, and the, probably the thing that made me an unemployable man, <laughs> is uh, my father subscribed to all the trade magazines. Okay. So, you know, there was no babysitters when your parents are both- independently employed yeah you end up at the warehouse most you know nights after school and yeah. on saturdays and um you know they don't have a lot of use for you while they're picking orders and stuff like that so you make your own you know and you're in a warehouse full of toys it's 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 not the worst thing in the world but i would read all those trade magazines yeah and I knew the president of Migos name and stuff like that when I like when I was like six which is, um, I think that's the weirdest part of growing up is I saw how the sausage was made. You know, yeah. I was reading all, I, I can honestly remember reading like Toy Fair issues. Yeah. And seeing stuff that I wouldn't see in stores because it didn't get made. Or, you know what I mean? And um, my dad also went to Toy Fair and he would bring me back things. I remember that very well. Um, bringing me back um Migos, uh Star Wars figures. And uh, one of the ones I really remember is he went to Toy Fair in like 78 and he brought me back this chem toy uh Spider-Man web shooting toy, which was like, you know, you had to take the web fluid in a cardboard alley playset and yeah. you took the web fluid and you made Spider-Man swing down it. It lasted 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it was it was that kind of a toy, but I I'd like I vividly remember him bringing me that, and uh, so it was um, an interesting childhood, uh, one I wouldn't trade, and unfortunately, uh, it abruptly ended because my folks sold the business like around eighty one. Okay, so I was like you know ten, and um, they got into much more boring. Uh, things like sunglasses and oh yeah, and 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 uh, postcards and that sort. And I just was less interested in going to my family business. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and and the worst thing about it is, and I've told this story a few times, is my dad was upgrading his warehouse and he'd sold his warehouse and you know he brought me in to help him pack a truck and he was in a dour mood mm -hmm. and um because you know i think he was behind the eight ball and i found this huge box full of 70s toys mm -hmm. i'm probably 12 at this time and i'm looking through it and there are uh, lincoln monsters and action jackson dolls and planet of the apes toys and aurora models like it was all this like the floor sweepings of the warehouse and i was like oh okay okay i, I got I gotta get, I gotta, I gotta take this with me. Like he won't care if I take it with me, but I gotta put it aside. And I put it in the bathroom and then I helped my dad for another couple of hours and then I forgot it. Oh, and I like that has been probably why I took collect toys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was the thing that I think if you had an origin story. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, man, that what that would have sent me into a spiral immediately. Of like, I need to find those toys so I feel vindicated about leaving immediate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Actually, did you collect? Did you end up getting them all? Do you remember? I, I have everything. Yeah, absolutely. I have everything my dad ever sold. Um, we interrupt this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Earth 2 Kentucky. Aliens have landed, Oatling, I want lowbrow art and bootleg toys. toys, 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 toys. Well, you come to the right place. Earth to Kentucky is a shop for folks who love vintage sci-fi, lowbrow, and art bootleg toys. Toys, 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 toys. They're located over there at 836 Main Street, Covington, Kentucky. Toys, 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 toys. They carry original art, vintage action figures, designer bootleg toys and toys, 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 and t-shirts. Designed exclusively for their store by some of their favorite artists. Thank you, Oatling. I enjoy Earth to Kentucky. I have all my favorite bootleg art toys. Toys. Hey, look at that over there! It's a spaceship! Yeah. I need to go now. Someone's filming me in my spaceship. Shop now. www.earthtokentucky.com. That's earth2kentucky.com. Or just land your spaceship when they're open. I uh, became kind of obsessed with it, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a thing. And my dad's just kind of amused by the whole thing, you know, yeah. because he's like, <laughs> You know, he'll see like um, I forget what I I think it's Planet of the Apes dolls. He's like, I paid eighty cents for those. Oh my god! You know, gosh. and it's like, well, yeah, mm -hmm. that's worth five hundred bucks now, Dad. Yeah. No, and he's like, no, I paid eighty cents. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't get into that mindset. I had a trailer of those. I was like, yeah, in nineteen seventy whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, that that's one of those things. Um, but that business fascinates me. And um, it became kind of a lifelong obsession. I have been into this since I was 15. Yeah. Collecting and this knowledge. And I didn't know where it was ever going to go, mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest with you. But I've always tried to write books, uh, magazines. Like I was tr constantly trying to do that in like high school and in college. And it wasn't until I kind of... I got into the publishing world myself mm -hmm. and then I went back to uh, design school uh, at night because I, I wanted to write rack toys as a book, but uh, I was trying to work with a designer buddy of mine and he just didn't know Mr. Spock yeah. and Captain Kirk. And I remember going like, Oh, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I work with this dude, he's not going to, he, I'm going to constantly, he doesn't understand pop culture. Yeah. And that's what motivated me to go back to college. Wow. And I'm super grateful for that. Like yeah. I'm, you know, um, my wife was really cool about it and supportive because she actually had gone back to college herself uh, just a couple of years earlier. And I supported her during that. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, I want to get my design skills up and um, write a book. And she was totally cool about it. And uh, it changed my life. Yeah, uh, it absolutely changed my life. That's incredible. Yeah. So let's talk about that first. We're saving the 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 new release to the end, but oh, let's yeah. talk about the first release of this Rack Toys book and what that was like writing in that process and and kind of funneling everything that you are and who you grew up to be into this book. Yeah, it was um it was a leap of faith. Yeah. And it was very personal. 
And I didn't realize how personal it was. But when I read it now, and I, you know, there were years where I didn't look at it. Mm -hmm. Because you become, when you write something or work on something, it can become one of those things where you, you get really like, oh God, I, I've lost all, um, I've lost all uh, objectivity with it. Yeah. Like, and um, I, like I currently, uh, I'm publishing a magazine called Toy Adventures and we do that um, every form, every three months. And it's sort of an extension of Rack Toys. And there's, you know, there's times when it goes out and people, people's reactions are more important to me than mine because I've looked at this damn thing for 60 days. Yeah. And it's like, I have no idea if this is good. <laughs> you know, I, I, just, I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> like, um, so when Rack Toys went out, uh, I was completely, this was two years, maybe even almost three years of work. Mm -hmm. I was completely drained. And it, it was one of those things where it takes a long time to build. It sold well, mm -hmm. um, but it took me uh, like I, I, I had many rejections from publishers and I got so sick of rejections. I thought, I'm just going to publish this myself. I'm going to throw my own money into this and just I believe in this and I'm going to try. And um, it sold really well. Um, yeah. And it sold out a few years ago and like copies of it are rare now they go for like $200 and wow um it took a long time to build like it was one of those things where all of a sudden people were writing me and asking me their opinion my opinion on things and these are things I didn't even know you know like yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that toy before but awesome you know um and I realized, oh, it's building. And I actually, I think I actually found a copy in a used bookstore, which was like one of my favorite things. Like, oh, there I am, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> um, and I regret not buying it, you know, uh, my, and this is, this is one of the failings that I have about myself. And I think a lot of creators have this, they don't keep one for themselves. Mm -hmm. They have that kind of like, well, I'll just make one. Uh, and I'd kept two for my children. I had kept two for my children but I didn't have one for myself and unfortunately my grandmother who was a main um I guess uh what you would call um enabler of rack toys um she passed away and yeah. on her nightstand was a copy of rack toys so that is my copy uh of, of the book and uh like I said I haven't really delved into it we did a digital edition a few years ago that you know, sells sells pretty steadily, but when Nacelle wrote me about it, it was a very interesting journey. Like I, I sat there and thought, huh, you know, uh, do I want someone else to have it? And then, you know, the, the immediate like inward look is, well, are you going to do anything with it? Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm not. Well, I'll give it to them, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So, and, and I was really, you know, as I, as I moved on with it, I was really honored that they even thought of me mm -hmm. to do this. So, um, and I say this a lot and I mean it, uh, to anyone that's listening or watching, if they're thinking of a madcap idea, um, a book about pharmacy toys <laughs> <laughs> is like not, um, gonna, it didn't get me rich, you know, yeah. but it changed my life for the better and it it's brought me so much joy it's brought me friends uh and and it's 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 made me very like happy with my life like it, it's improved my life so yeah. what i'm trying to say is if you have an idea for a, a book or a concept just put it out there just do it yeah um because pushing forward with positive energy i think begets positive energy and um, <clears throat> sitting there not doing the thing is going to bring you the same results. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, I'm just such a fan of people doing stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's yeah. so much better than sitting on Facebook and bitching about stuff. Yeah. You know, like, um, 
it's it's just an important uh, factor in this life, and and um, you know, I I just now like I I'm making rack toys mm-hmm. uh, for my magazine in the fourth issue. We made a um, a glider of uh, there there in the seventies. There was this wonderful knockoff character called Mister Rock. <laughs> Okay, I, I think you can guess who he's yeah. imitating. And I just got this weird idea and I spoke to an artist and the artist was like, oh, that's so funny, let's do it. And we made a Mr. Rock cosmic glider. <laughs> so it's just this Mr. Spock, off model Mr. Spock knockoff with his yeah. pink tricorder. And we made a little like um, flyer that's uh, gonna be included in the next issue of the magazine. Oh, I love and that. And I just sit there every like two, three months and go to these Chinese factories and go, what stupid crap can you make me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> What bizarre toys that didn't exist can we now do to shove in the magazine? And right now I'm making puppy stickers. Oh my you know? gosh, yeah. And um, like I said, like it, it's just been a wonderful journey and uh, I owe it a lot to the irony of these absolutely bizarre toys that we just accepted as reality as kids, you know? Yeah. And they are an art unto themselves. And I think they inspire us. They were the end all be all. I remember growing up um, and going to places and finding toys that are kind of like that and then going to swap meets and swap meets are just Mm. covered in those. And they were, yeah. And it was the pinnacle of my toy playing like era of the nineties. And I loved yeah. it. Do you collect stuff? What do you collect? Uh, I'm not really a collector. I, I make my own bootleg toys and I do okay. all kinds of that. Well, um, what are your genres? Uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out after a year of doing this. I'm trying to figure out what I love to do. Right. Yeah. And I think that is, uh, cause there's bootleg artists that stick with like, Oh, I only do, uh, star Wars and I only do like tar- uh, star Trek stuff. But it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. The world out, out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I love looking at bootleg action figures and, um, you know, I sit there on Instagram and just look and like, there's just everything you can think of yeah. people are making figures of and, it actually kind of bugs me at a point because you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I wanted to do that. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> no, um, sure. my favorite boot, like things I've ever made are, um, I collect, uh, where is it? Here it is. Parachuting action figures. Yes. I love those as a kid. So like, you know, you've got the incredible Hulk on a parachute, which oh my gosh. makes zero sense. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I've done a series. I did the Universal Monsters on parachutes. Yeah. Because I honestly couldn't believe that the company that had the license for them didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, why? You know, you've done so much stupid. You did parachuting Planet of the Apes. You did parachuting Star Trek. Why didn't you do parachuting monsters? Yeah. You know, so I made all those using, you know, Sculpey and, and, and my design skills. And then, um, I started making my own characters like Brick Mantooth, parachuting Brick Mantooth. Like I was doing them in resin at this point. And then TV characters, you know, like Six Million Dollar Man. And then I think the one I made for a friend was Columbo. Oh, oh no, Rock, Rockford Files. That was it. <laughs> I just made a Rockford Files parachuting. Because it was like, yeah, that's the, st- he's a big fan of Rockford Files. And it's like, yeah. well, here's the stupidest. <laughs> <laughs> you know? parachuting figure ever but um i'm not alone like there's other people doing that sort of thing and like it's like a scene and i completely dig it i mean i just i want to see more and more from that and i think that's the future because um creativity is being kind of shut down at a corporate level Mm -hmm. so it's up to the fans to just have fun with this stuff. And I, I love, I love mashups and. We interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. The bootleg box. Okay, dude, 
Why am I at the library? Shh. I'm looking for the bootleg Bible. The bootleg Bible? Shh. Yeah. It's a beginner's guide to bootleg toy making. It helps aspiring artists make their own toys. You can order it at bluemondaypress.com. Wait, we can order it? That's right. The Bootleg Bible, a guide to bootleg toy makers, published by Blue Monday Press. Includes interviews with bootleg artists like The Suck Lord, Rika, Obvious Flare, Barbie World, Marquee Marauders Club, Ben Gore, Trap Toys, and art from a whole host of other artists all around the world. Also includes a step-by-step -step beginner's guide to bootleg toy making. So order yours today at bluemondaypress.com. Why are we even at the library? I don't know. The Bootleg Bible. Order now at BlueMondayPress.com. You know, like, I think it was uh, Aust, um, Patton Oswald who had these Star Wars, Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill mashup figures. <laughs> and he was posting them. I was like, yes, you know, yeah. the world needs more of that. And uh, I super duper enjoy that stuff. Yeah, kit bashing is a favorite of mine to look at, like when they mash up. I did um, two, I was going to continue the series, but I did uh, C3PO and Jack from Jack in the Box. Oh, cool. And, and then I did um, Ronald McDonald stuck in Carbonite. And so I was super excited <laughs> for both of them. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I, yeah. I, I had one of those jack in the boxes on my antenna on my car, and I'm Canadian. Oh. <laughs> no one knew what that was, but I, yeah. I just I I forget where I was. Maybe I drove to like Illinois and I got one of those and I was so yeah. amused by it. And then someone stole it. That oh really my gosh. pissed me off. <laughs> we'll have to get people to send you more and more and more. <laughs> but I don't have a car antenna anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah that that kind of stuff is amazing yeah and, and it's cool to see i think it just it's a cool um like form of creativity that i didn't know because in in high school and college art was not my thing i didn't know no i kidding. just yeah i knew i needed to be creative but i yeah. never saw art as a medium because i was always told that it's you either paint or you draw and that's it right yeah and that's that's a failing and and for me uh, it was art teachers. Yeah. Um, a lot of my art teachers were bullies. Yeah. Perfectly honest with you. I had one cool art teacher. He was an underground comics guy and nobody knew that except me because <laughs> I found one of his underground comics yeah. and it was pretty damn good, but he was, and he was not nice to me. I, yeah. I won't say that he was, um, you know, he coddled me. He was actually the meanest one I had, but it was because in my opinion, he saw me as a lazy bugger. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would be doodling instead of doing his exercise and you go, yeah, Brian, those guys need muscles right here. And then he would go <laughs> buy a wrestling magazine and look at human bodies. Yeah. And you know, it'd be like, oh, I'm not even doing your project and you're yelling at, you know, like, um, Whereas some of the other art teachers were just like abusive. Yeah. They, they didn't like me and they wanted me out of their class. And, they, you know, they just thought I was another punk asshole who um, wanted an easy credit. But meanwhile, I, I, I know I had talent, but I just didn't, you know, I also had ADHD. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was also kind of a dick. Um, so it was like one of those things where they, I didn't fit into their box and, but I, I was lucky enough to, um, I was lucky enough to, uh, figure that out. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, no, this is just not going to work for you. Like, you know, she, she, she doesn't like you. And my, <laughs> my favorite story about my grade 11 art teacher is, I worked in a restaurant not far from the high school. Yeah. And she came to eat there one day and I was in the kitchen and she knew I, you know, she didn't like me. I didn't like her. Yeah. And what, my boss had this really funny thing. It was like, my teachers out there. I'm like, like, go out through the window and wave at her. <laughs> and I was like, and she's like, and I was like, and he goes, now nod. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> and it was just the funniest thing because then she ate her lunch thinking I, you know, had put pubic hairs in yeah. there or something like that. But I did nothing to her lunch. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So we are, so you have, uh, we talked a little bit of the first release of this labor of love that kind of uh-huh. drained you. And we're swinging back around. And this is the PS de la Resistance right here. You yeah. have uh, Nacelle comes in and they they want to take up this book and they want yeah. you to add to it. Yeah. And they want to bring it. And so now you have a release coming up so soon. September 10th. Yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. So what does that look like? You labored for two, three years and you're a little drained and it's, it's sold well. And now you can't find your books really. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and honestly, I never followed it up because my young daughter who would have been about six when the book came out, begged me not to write another book. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, Daddy, please don't write another book. Because, like, I was always in my office. Yep. And, you know, I was like, yeah, you know what, this this time. And I don't regret that at all. She's she's uh, 16 now. Um, but, yeah, that was, uh, that was rough on her. Yeah. And um, so it was kind of like when they contacted me, it was kind of like a, a thing in the past, but it was also a thing like, what do I, because I was, a con, because uh, Plaid Stallions has grown. I have a YouTube channel that's grown. We have a magazine and I would always get hit up by people going, when's your book coming back at? I yeah. want your book. And it was like, uh, to me, it, it was something that was a reflection of the past. I didn't want to tie all my money back into it. It did well, but I, I wanted to do something else. And so for Nacelle to go, well, we want to invest in this was yeah. like, wow, really? You know, like how validating, how wonderful. Um, and I had to sleep on it because I'm a Libra <laughs> and I don't make good decisions. But when I thought about it after, like I said, it was like, well, I'm not going to republish this. So why don't I jump in bed with a company that I actually really like, like I like the toys that made us. Yes, you know? yes. Um, and, and you know, the funny thing is my favorite episodes of that show are about toys. I don't give a crap about, <laughs> like I could just sit there and watch them talk about hello kitty. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm also just an interested person. I love toys. Yeah. And to watch the Gia Joe one, I sit there and go, yeah, I know. I know. But then you, when you watch something about like Masters of the Universe, which I'm not that keen on, it's like, oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> yeah, I'm a bigger fan of when they go after uh, a toy or that sort of thing that I'm not all that into. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's a weird thing. So, um, and it was wonderful too because I had this meeting, this Skype meeting with um, Rich and and the crew from uh, Nacelle and then Brian Volkweiss uh, jumped in and he said, you know, he said the most beautiful thing. He said, you know, F you, Hyler. Uh, <laughs> I'm now collecting all these stupid toys, yeah. you know, which, I, which I took as a compliment. I was like, yeah, that, well, that's, I get that a lot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you have added, uh, are you able to talk about what you've added to the book to make it, to like yeah. bump it up again? Yeah, I've added a few um, toys. Like, it's still the same book, essentially. But I've uh, kicked it up a notch with a few items that I've picked up since then that are probably, like, my favorite things. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I've collected uh, a toy line based on a 70s TV show that I love called Space Sentinels, and I've added that in. I've added a few knockoffs. I to, to 90s toy lovers, I had it probably my favorite 90s knockoff, which is a uh, Kevin Sorbo dollar store Hercules. I love that figure uh, called like Mighty Hercules, and there's mm-hmm. actually Mighty Princess, but I don't own <laughs> I don't own the knockoff Xena. I probably will because I'm uh, my wife and I are big Xena fans. Um, we added a few different. Uh, few different things some new photos of stuff that i discovered yeah 
yeah, it's it's a fun it's a fun little upgrade. If you own the original book, it's probably not a must have. But if you didn't own the original book, this is a must have. Yeah, I'm excited you know? for it to release. Yeah, me too. We uh, <laughs> so we're coming up on the closing of this episode. But what is cool and what I love to do for every artist that is on here is you get the last bit to plug everything that has to do with you. All your oh. podcasts, your Instagrams, your websites, the book, everything that comes out that has your name on it. Okay. Yeah. That's gonna, I'm going to be a minute. Uh, no, I'm into it. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> we, I love this part because it lets people know everything about who you are, if they don't oh. already know. Yeah. No, that, that's wonderful. And I appreciate that. Um, the number one place to find me is if you just Google the words plaid stallions. Mm-hmm. That is something that I've you know, I apparently I have the niche on, except there is a band called the Blood Stallions. <laughs> As I always thought it was a great band name. Yeah. Uh, I have a magazine that comes out every three months called Toy Ventures, which is really an extension of Rack Toys. Mm-hmm. The fact that we talk about the unsung heroes of toys, you know, I don't want to talk about G.I. Joe or Real American Hero. I want to talk about Sergeant Rock by Remco you know yeah. what I mean um and this month we have a wonderful issue that's talking about Migo Planet of the Apes we're talking about an amazing toy line called Thriller Graveyard Gang which is actually toys based on the Michael Jackson Thriller video okay um, and we've got a thing on Emma Peel and we have a whole piece about uh, Baby Frankenstein which is a Universal's attempt to like have a universal monsters babies okay you know and and the author of that article Corey, who's my partner in this he goes um <laughs> he goes does that mean he's made of dead children you know <laughs> uh, i have a podcast i do uh twice a month with my uh very good friend jason lindsey who runs a toy company called pod stallions and it is really just a rambling of two guys that know way too much about pop culture um, you know, like we, we don't, we, we pick a target, like a tangent or a topic, and then we just kind of like ramble on. And it, the best description I have of that is it's a car ride and the two guys in the front are having a conversation and you're listening and you're trying to interject. And I get the, the best compliment I ever got is like, I keep yelling at you too. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> so, um, that's that. And of course I have a YouTube channel. Uh, Brick Man Tooth, which is, of course, my character. And I, you know, that's where you can find every Pod Stallions. You can find every Toy Ventures episode that I do, which I do talk about rack toys extensively on YouTube. And I also uh, review new Mego figures like uh, Cornelius Caesar there. And uh, I also talk about vintage Mego toys because vintage Mego toys are my passion. And what, yeah. it was my gateway drug, so to speak. So um, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about myself other than on my Instagram, I, I show my paintings. But uh, that, that's me. And um, my avatar on my magazines is uh, a painting I did called Gentleman Slee Stack. Oh, yeah. Oh, which yeah. is a slee stack in a polyester outfit. And that, that defines me. Yeah. (laughs) I love that so much. Uh, I honestly, this is it. What's cool about this is I didn't know before this interview, didn't really know much about rack toys. I just knew that they were fun to look at and like, Oh yeah. I played with them as a kid. And um, so it's just so good to know that there's a, uh, like a new edition of a book that I didn't know existed is coming out and we can get it. And it's coming out so soon. It's um I hope that book is a moment of Zen for people. Yeah. Uh, I've had people tell me over the years that, you know, I keep it in the backseat of my car. Yeah. And when I'm somewhere and I'm bored, I just flip through it. And it's like, yes, that, you know, books are supposed to be moments of Zen Mm -hmm. and collector books, especially so because we can't have it all. Yeah. And it's fun to just look at random shots of toys <laughs> yeah. and weird stuff and go, Oh, that's so funny. You know, um, 
and and I think that's the purpose of a good book is to bring you joy, and that's the purpose of collecting is to you know to 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 bring that happiness. And um, I hope Rack Toys does that for folks. Brian, thank you so much for being on. Oh man, this has been a real pleasure. Yeah, it's been so good. I'm glad that uh, Nisal set this up because I I don't know that I would have gotten to do this interview. I'm super grateful for them because this this has been a blast. Toys on tap. Toys on tap. The next episode. The next episode. It's great. It's amazing. You're going to want to listen to it. It's not right now, though. You're going to have to wait till the next episode to listen to it. Oh, when's that? The next one. Cool. Toys on tap. Toys on tap. The next one's going to be good, too. So stay tuned and, and, and listen to that. Toys on tap. Awesome.